Hello, I'm Steve Larson, engineer at CAT Pumps. And on today's whiteboard session, we're going to do cavitation part three. It's a little review of what we did in part one and part two, and then a, a continuation on actually seeing a pump in operation. So what we're going to look at is, is in, as we did in part one, we had a pumping chamber that we'd drawn on the whiteboard, and it had a plunger, inlet valve, discharge valve, and it showed as a plunger went back and forth that on the, on the reverse um, direction it had to fill that pumping chamber with water and if we couldn't fill the chamber it would turn a little bit of that liquid into a gas phase and that's what cavitation is is, this, is that expanding of that liquid into a gas phase and then it recollapses on the forward stroke as you start to build pressure and this cavitation creates a very violent force and this force has enough power to chip away at surfaces like your valves and your seats and your ceramic plungers. And we know that ceramic has a compressive strength of over 300,000 PSI. So just, you can imagine that this must be a very violent force that's uh, acting on these parts to cause them to, to fail. And so as we moved into part two, we learned how do we prevent cavitation? And the first thing we learned about was temperature. Temperature can affect it because water stays in a liquid phase depending on its pressure and temperature. And as the temperature goes up, it takes much more pressure to keep that in a liquid state. So a higher temperature water is going to be a lot more likely to cavitate than a low pressure or low temperature water. Uh, the other thing that we want to that we considered was the inlet. And I'm referring to the inlet of the pump how well is it designed to allow the water to get into the pump. The pumps are designed to handle their spec ratings as far as flow, pressure, RPM, but we still have to design a system so that we get enough water to the pump so that it can properly fill its chamber. The more restriction on the inlet, the higher the chances of cavitation. The other thing we want to cover is the speed. The speed of the plunger refers to how fast the plungers are going back and forth or the RPM of the pump. If this plunger is moving very slow, it has a lot more time for each stroke to fill the chamber with water. If it's going very fast, it has a lot less time to fill during each stroke. And so those are the things we need to consider uh, to avoid cavitation. The temperature of the water, the inlet conditions, and the speed of the pump. With, with that, we can move into the actual operation on a pump. And so we have, in front of me here, is one of our pumps with an acrylic manifold assembly put on it so that we can see the internals. And what we're looking for is what does it look like actually inside as the pump cavitates. And so this is one of our piston pumps, so it'll have a, a piston with an inlet valve that goes back and forth as the pump moves. And you'll see it open and close with the forward and the return stroke, just like it should. And then there's a uh, discharge valve assembly with a spring and a valve that's, that's held closed by that spring. And then at, during the forward stroke, that valve will come off enough to let that volume of water escape. And that's how the pump operates. And so we'll fire this up and, and, and get her going. And as you can see, the piston's moving back and forth in that motion, allowing water into the pumping chamber and then out of the pumping chamber via the discharge valves, and then it's returning and going back down into the reservoir. This is our inlet line. We're going through this valve that I can change the restriction on, coming through, and we have a vacuum gauge, so it's running around four or five inches of mercury here, which is within the spec rating of the pump. As we start to restrict this inlet, we can start to see the bubbles forming and, and the water separating and collapsing and getting this, this higher vacuum going. And of course, then the vacuum goes up higher as well. And now we're in a cavitation state on this pump. So this is what you want to avoid. 